All right, welcome to part five of They Worshipped the Dragon. Uh, I'm, I know I'm, I'm doing a lot of background stuff because this is... I'm just trying to lay a foundation so that, you know, people always try to uh, accuse you of uh, pulling stuff out of context. Well, what can I tell you? There's a lot of heretics, heretics out there that will try to lead you down the wrong path. And let me tell you something. I'm not asking for your donations. I'm not trying to sell you a book. I'm not buying, trying to buy a new uh, jet so I can fly across the country. So I'm just giving you the scriptures. That's all I'm doing. Revelation 12. And just so you know, I did an entire Bible study playlist on Revelation chapter 12. So, let's take a look. And there appeared in heaven a... Uh, I'm sorry. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Well, guess what? In this particular instance, these 12 stars are the children of Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. We're going to cover who the dragon is. We're going to cover who the serpent is in another study, possibly. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, you know, people, this has to be symbolism. This has to be a figure of speech because, you know, a dragon drawing a third of the stars and casting them to earth, what would happen if the stars, you know, if the sun, just one sun, our sun, just one sun came to the earth, the earth would be burned up. So this has to be talking about the fallen angels. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, people will say, well, you know, Revelation is the future. So this this hasn't happened yet. Okay, well, you know, part... Well, didn't we just read that... Um, well, parts of Revelation are past. Parts were present in John's time, the present when John was alive. And then parts of it are the future. So is this future? Well, let's take a look at what Jesus says. Turn to Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 16. Jesus said, He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. So, if you're preaching, well, he's, he's speaking to the apostles here. So if they're not going to hear the apostles, they're not going to hear Jesus. And if they hate the apostles, they hate Jesus. And if they hate Jesus, they hate God the Father that sent Jesus. And the churches will try to tell you that those that hate Jesus are God's chosen people. I don't think so. But that's just one person's opinion. Okay? Verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy. Now, uh, Jesus, uh, they had sent out these seventy 
to do work for the Lord. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Do you ever wonder why people hate the name of Jesus? Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You ever wonder why they don't like the name of Jesus? Why they you want to use Yeshua HaMashiach or Yahshua or Yahashua or whatever other thing? Because the devils are subject to the name of Jesus. They hate that name. I tell you what, let's, I want to see a Hebrew roots person cast a devil out in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I want to see that. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he, he who's he? Jesus. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, Jesus lived over 1900 years ago, and he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He didn't say, this is past tense. Okay, so evidently it happened in the past. Jesus is speaking in the past tense. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, obviously, when it says nothing's going to be able to hurt you, it's talking in the spiritual sense because, let's face it, uh, from what I understand, 10 of the 12 apostles were martyred according to tradition and legend. Uh, Judas hung himself. Uh, John, John, who was on the Isle of Patmos, who penned the book of Revelation, was the only one that died of old age. And uh, Stephen was martyred, and Paul was martyred, uh, all according to history, legend, tradition. So, what can I tell you? All right, so, when the, when, let's take a look at some more stuff. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 14. Now, the Bible has a thing called parallelism. And what it'll do is it'll use something. It'll talk about a person, for example, being a king. And then it'll talk about the, the, uh, the prince of the devils later. So let's take a look at that. Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of their Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage whereon thou wast made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now who was the king of Babylon? Nebuchadnezzar. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hast the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Now, for those of you who don't know it, um, Nebuchadnezzar wrote one of the chapters in the book of Daniel. I think it was chapter 4. You can read about it. Uh, let's see. Verse 3. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. What's a feller? Uh, that's somebody that fells the trees, you know, somebody, you know, uh, a lumberjack. Now, here it is. You got the cedars of Lebanon speaking. Keep that in mind. This is going to be a very important thing. Sometimes trees are talking about plants. Sometimes trees are talking about other things. And we're going to find out later. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And I believe this is talking about the resurrection of the wicked. There's three different words that they translate as hell. One of them is the grave. And the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Christadelphians and a bunch of other people, they'll say, oh yeah, see, the grave, that they translate that as hell. That's, that's it. No, that's not all it. There's another word called Gehenna, which was likened unto a fire. And then there was Tartarus, which was the abode, the deepest, darkest abode where the fallen angels are locked up in chains. And then people will point out and say, well, you know, that's Greek mythology. You know, let me tell you something. You know, the tri uh, you know the Godhead. We covered that in a previous lesson. They say, "Oh, the Trinity." You know, God is three gods, three gods, right? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They make it out to be three when they said these three are one. Okay, and then what they do is they'll point to, I believe, the Roman god Janus, J-A-N-U-S, that had three, three faces. And they'll say, see, see, that's pagan. Well, you know, come on, people. Satan can, will imitate and counterfeit everything that God does that's good. Just because you find something in the occult that mimics a Bible, something in the Bible, doesn't necessarily mean the Bible's wrong. It means that uh, it was counterfeited. It means it, it's it's a fake. You know, so just because somebody says, oh, well, Tartarus, that's a Greek mythology. That doesn't mean the Bible's wrong. It just means that people spend more time listening to the enemy than they do knowing what the Bible says. Verse 9 again, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? These are the, the, the wicked that are in hell, people. Verse 11, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. That's a musical instrument. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven? 
How art thou fallen from heaven? This is Isaiah, people. This is Old Testament. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You hear all those positive confessions? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will sit upon the mount. I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. Positive confession. You hear that in the, the charismatic uh, Pentecostal groups. Positive confession. It didn't work for Satan, Lucifer. I will ascend upon above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. A branch, like a tree, right? But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable, abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden unto foot, uh, under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Now, when, you know, people will try to tell you, oh, well, you know, that was that Lucifer thing. That's talking about the king of Babylon. Well, parts of it were talking about the physical king, the human king of Babylon, but parts of it is talking about the spiritual king of Babylon. Mystery Babylon? Hmm. Think about that. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess land, nor fill the face of the earth with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant, and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession of for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A besom is a type of broom. He's going to sweep it with the broom of destruction. You know what a broom does? It, it, it gets rid of the dirt. You sweep the dirt away. So God's going to sweep it with a broom of destruction. A besom is just a type of broom. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. So, all right, turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ezekiel's a wild book. Let me tell you something. Ezekiel 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, 
Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By the great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, I, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before them that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now listen, we just read the part where he was talking about the human king of Tyrus, but now we're talking about the spiritual king of Tyrus, and I'm going to prove that. We're talking about the, the spiritual wicked power behind the throne. Verse 12. Ezekiel 28, 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been at Eden, the garden of God. Was the king of Tyrus, the human king of Tyrus, in the garden of God? No. Who was in the garden of God? Satan. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, the and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created not born, created. And tabrets and pipes, they're talking about musical instruments here. The workmanship of, of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What did it cover? God's throne. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. It's not talking about a human here. Verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Didn't, didn't the Lord say on the sixth day everything was good that he'd created? Yes, Yes, the Satan was created good. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Evil, wickedness. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. This is very important, people. Satan was gorgeous, probably one of the, the most beautiful of all God's creations. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. 
Remember Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And, uh, I'm sorry, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Verse 16 again. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Remember, violence. There was war in heaven. Remember? All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. Let's skip to verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it, was, as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Listen carefully. And there was, was, and there was war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So who's the great dragon? That old serpent called the devil and Satan. The serpent in the Garden of Eden was the devil and Satan. Well, the, that's just another, same entity. I've had people tell me, the devil and Satan are two different entities. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why old? Because he'd been around for a long time. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Same thing. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, so we've, we're coming up on 30 minutes. I think I'm going to close this out. I think I've made my point. Um, I hope you stick around for the next Bible study. We're going to take a look at some attributes of how Satan does things. And then we're going to take a look at the Garden of Eden, what happened, the fall of Eve. And Adam. All right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.